Доброго вечора, ми з України. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи, в эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. In today's video I will share with you my experience about being admitted to the Soviet era college, Kyiv Polytechnical Institute, back in 1988. On this photo you could see how I looked back in 1988, so I was 17 year old, just finishing the 10th grade, the last grade of the Soviet high school. And just a friendly reminder, if you're interested in the topic of the Soviet education, I already have a playlist called Soviet Education, which has almost 30 different videos, mostly based on my experience. So it's a kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school. Uh, so you're welcome to check it out. I'll post the link below this video. Okay, so before we begin, we need to learn a new Soviet term abbreviation which was very popular back in the day so let's have a lesson of the soviet russian language vuz 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 is an abbreviation for высшее учебное заведение so it's a higher education facility which people just call vuz without specifying is that a university or institute so we had two kinds of vuz university or institute. So, for example, I attended Kiev Polytechnical Institute. At the same time, we had Kiev State University also in my hometown. And I had actually to look it up the difference between university and institute. They both are VUZ, Wysho Chepna Zavidenia, but it looks like institute usually specializes in specific uh, profession or uh, specific industry. Meanwhile, university could cover as much as like seven different industries and also they could have some kind of research departments into universities, institutes didn't have those. So for example, we had Medicinsky Institute, so medical institute that were preparing doctors. We had uh, Pedagogicky Institute, Ped Institute, preparing teachers, or like Polytechnical Institute, of course, it's anything related to industries and stuff like that. If you watch my video, the myth about free education in the Soviet Union, you should know that for a while, for 16 years, between 1940 to 1956, so during the Stalin rule and a little bit of Khrushchev, education in the Soviet Union wasn't free. People had to pay to attend college and even to attend the high school. But back in my days, so in the 1980s, when I became a student of Kyiv Polytechnical Institute, I didn't have to pay anything for my education, and I was getting a stipend of 50 rubles per month, which was a decent amount of money. It was pretty much a third of my parents' salary. I mean, like my mom was making about 150 rubles a month, and I had a stipend of 50 rubles a month. But of course, despite the fact that education was free of charge, you still had to be smart enough to get into the college. It wasn't for everyone. There was pretty tough entry exams, as we call them, examining tests, and usually they involved written or oral board kind of tests. And in my case, it was math, physics, and Russian literature. I needed to write an essay. They'll be given uh, four topics, usually like three topics, and the fourth one will be free topics. You just write about anything you want. In Soviet Union, it was mandatory to attend at least eight years of school. So pretty much what in America they call high school, that would be already like voluntarily up to you. So everyone will go for eight years to school. And once again, I need to remind you, we went to school six days a week, so including Saturdays. So that way we had a shorter school program the total in school we spent only 10 years not like 13 here in the united states so for example i have two school certificates one is about finishing eight years of school and it's called attestat anipolnom srednim obrazovani so it's a certificate about incomplete uh, secondary education and the second one it's about finishing 10 years of school and that one is attestat o srednim obrazovani so that will be a certificate about secondary education. So one is incomplete secondary education, eight years, and then complete secondary education, 10 years. And after finishing eight grades, kids could go and just start working, or in most cases, they would attend trade schools. So PTU, Professionalne Technische Uchilische, or Technikum. So once again, it's a, like a technical college. Uh, so those were usually pupils with the worst grades. 
and the smartest one will remain in school for two more years to get a complete secondary education. And usually that was a VUS material, uh, people who go on, uh, to real college, institute, or university. For example, in my class, about 50% of kids left after the eighth grade, and then they combined. So we had a total of four eighth grade classes, and they combined them in two when I became a ninth grader. And it was an interesting experience because suddenly you have uh, totally different kids. And once again, a reminder, in Soviet schools, they didn't rotate children every year like they do it here in America. Sometimes the kids you start school in the first grade, that's the kids you're going to finish your school in the 10th grade. So for 10 years, you can have same children in your class. And I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, you can really develop great relations. And quite often, uh, you become a friend, lifetime friend with someone from your class because you were friends for 10 years, but you don't meet new children because you're stuck in the same class. And now we need to talk about attestat a srednjem obrazovanje. So it's a certificate about finishing the high school, 10 year education in case of the Soviet Union. So here we're looking at my attestat about finishing 10 years in school back in 1988. And it's in Russian and Ukrainian language. And it shows the list of the subjects that I studied and got grades. And uh, I already showed that before, but let's uh, go quickly. I studied Ukrainian language and I got four. Once again, uh, our grades were from one to five. Five is excellent, four is good, three is satisfactory, two is unsatisfactory, so it's failure. And hardly anyone used one. So four will be B, I said uh, five will be A, and three that will be C grade. So Ukrainian language four, Ukrainian literature four, Russian language four, Russian literature five. So here you go, I'm a Ukrainian person that had a Russian literature uh, excellent grade, but Ukrainian literature only B grade. Uh, geometry four, I skipped one, algebra four. Uh, for the first time, our school had computers. So I actually had a, like a, a languages, computer languages. And calculation had excellent grade five. History of the Soviet Union, uh, five. General history, five. I always was strong with history. Um, so that's like uh, theories of communism, capitalism. Uh, I got excellent. Geography, excellent. Biology, excellent. Physics, excellent. Astronomy, excellent. Uh, chemistry, four. English, foreign language, which in my case was English, uh, five. Uh, Labor education, four. Initial military uh, preparedness lessons, four. And physical culture, four. So the total was uh, 19 subjects uh, that I studied. And those grades, just like in America, you uh, calculate the average. So in my case, the average, let's see, was 4.52. So that's a solid B+. Plus, uh, and that's what uh, help you or can sink you uh, during your test while you're trying to get into college. Despite the fact that Soviet government paid for the higher education, there was no uh, forcing people where to go. So everyone could decide, okay, I want to be a teacher. So I go to a pedagogical institute or I want to be a doctor. So I go to a medical institute. In my case, uh, I honestly didn't know what to do. Like I had no interest, any particular interest, except I like to always write stories and uh, keep in diary. Unfortunately, my parents never pushed me. They weren't really involved in that part of my life. So it was totally up to me. I wish they were pushed me towards trying to get into university, Kiev uh, State University on the journalistics department. But I even didn't think about it. So. My cousin, uh, Tanya, advised me to hey, get education. They will be engineer working at some food processing plant because being close to food in Soviet Union, it's always mean that you can get additional income, wink, wink. Uh, so I tried to get into the uh, Kievsky uh, Technologiyski Institute uh, Pishivoy Promotion. So this was a, a technological institute of the food processing industry. But unfortunately, because of my poor eyesight, and there was limitation for some reason, I couldn't go. And I discovered there was, was really limited amount of colleges that would take me with my poor eyesight, 
One was like a welding department in the Kiev Polytechnical Institute, which was crazy. Like, why would I study welding being a welder engineer if I already have a poor eyesight? Another one was uh, radio electronics uh, department. That's the one I end up going uh, for. I never knew about it, but when I was researching this topic, I discovered they actually published like a reference book uh, called Spravachnik для поступающих высшее учебное заведение. Remember, высшее учебное заведение, вуз. So that was like a, a list of all the colleges in the Soviet Union. Uh, so will help you to make choice where you want to go. So kids could uh, get it in the library, I guess, and uh, find out what college is available in your hometown or in your republic. Or just if you're really brave, you could try to go to Moscow and Leningrad, which had the best colleges back then, and try to get there. So that's kind of this book look from 1980. So Spravachnik will be like your rap. The summer of 1988 was probably one of the most stressful summers of my life because, first of all, I had to successfully pass the exit tests in my high school. So we had actually four, we call it examinee. So there'll be math, physics, uh, Russian language and Russian literature, I believe, in my case. And you have to prepare for those and successfully pass them because they affect your grades in your attestat, in your certificate. Then, in about two months, you start other set of tests, now entry tests, uh, going to college. So exit tests for the 10th grade, Vipuskne examine, and two months later, entry tests going to college. So that was a lot of... Um, grinding and studying and yeah a lot of headaches and usually we had school up to end of may so the school year starts on september 1st and ends on may 31st and then you have finals then another maybe two weeks or a week of finals then before august 1st when the entry test start for the college you need to uh, travel to your college and in my case you know it was right in kiev so i didn't have to travel far but a lot of people had to travel, bring their papers, submit the papers, get accepted, and then you know know the schedule when your entry test would begin. So really, really stressful summer. As I mentioned earlier, the college education was free, so no one really cared about what kind of college because of the cost is usually or what your heart desires or what your brain desired or what your stomach desired. But of course, there were some colleges that no one wanted to attend and they had a, actually less people applying for that college. There were places for students available, for example, like agronomy. So if you want to be in uh, agriculture field, that means they're going to send you some village to work for collective farm. It didn't sound that great. Usually that's people coming from the villages and they get a degree in agriculture and going back to the village. But if you're a person living in a city, you don't really want to go out of the city because it's like traveling back in time at least 50 to 75 years you're going to start using outhouse uh, have no plumbing have really basic uh, life conditions so no one wanted to leave the city so those institutes or universities they usually were not fully filled with students meanwhile some other colleges i don't know why the Pedagogical Institute, so the colleges that were uh, making and uh, producing teachers, a lot of uh, people wanted to be a teacher. So there was a lot of competition there. And of course, in medical field, which I also surprised because doctors weren't paid really well in the Soviet Union. So I need to ask my friend why, because my friend only got in on the second try and using blood, so using a uh, personal connection of his mother. Uh, so I'm not sure why those professions were so popular. But the most prestigious college in the uh, Soviet Union was probably MGIMO at the Moskovsky Государственный Институт Международных Отношений. So it's a Moscow Institute of International Relations. That's where you become a diplomat or a KGB agent with a diplomat passport. So now we need to talk about another educational Russian term called проходной бал. Проходной бал, which means like uh, pass through grade. So the main difference between American college and Soviet era college is that in America, 
they only look at your high school diploma average, right? And then they say, okay, it's high enough for you to get accepted. Of course, if you have enough money. In Soviet Union, they add the results of your entry test plus the average number from your high school diploma will say that, you know, that certificate I showed you earlier. So for example, if you have a three tests and you score five, which is the max, so you'll be 15 plus whatever your average from your high school diploma, in my case, 4.52. So then you scored 19.52 and a pass through grade or Prahadnoy Bal could be 17 or 18 based on how many people I'm trying to get in. If I remember correctly, the path through grade for my department, the radio electronic department of Kiev Polytechnical Institute was, I believe, uh, 16 or 17. And I scored three on math, five on physics, five on Russian literature. And my uh, score from the high school was 4.52. So my total score was 17.5. So I had a good margin uh, to pass above 16 or 15. And in those colleges that had uh, less people applying than spots were available, you only needed to pass the entry test and not to fail them. Otherwise, you'll be automatically accepted. So that was the easy part. So in case if you knew that you just want to get in the college to skip the army service, and I have a video about it, I'll post the link below. Then you just go somewhere which is not popular, so it's easy to get in, but still offers the option to um, skip the military draft. That's what my friend Igor did back in the same year, 1988. He went, he went to Western Ukraine and attended the college for oil <laughs> drill and exploration, where he had zero interest. But it was easy to get in and he uh, skipped the army service. And of course, every college institute or university uh, had dormitories for out of town students. That's one of the reasons why I didn't want to uh, get into college somewhere in the other city because I like to stay home in my own apartment and have mom's food. And that's why I went uh, right there in Kiev and I never had experience of living in dormitories in the college which could be quite interesting stories there but it is always young people they're silly they'll waste a lot of money on drinking and partying and studying as well and before i finish i would like also to mention an important part of soviet higher education it's so-called распределение or distribution of people who finish the college and that was the payment for free education that you could get sent anywhere in the country for three years to work at the factory or be a teacher in some small village or be a doctor in some tiny village in Siberia. But that was the form of payment that you had no choice where you're going after you finish the college. So for three years, people had to work whatever they got sent to. And the hope, general hope was maybe the girl will marry there and stay there. But a lot of times, as long as people were done with three years, they would come back home to their nice big city and try to get a job there. And распределение was also officially based on your grades. So the best students who had the best grades, they will get the better spots. And then of course, down the line, then you'll get sent out somewhere middle of nowhere. Or if you know people that will, for brides or for connections, can get you a nice spot or it will already be prepared for you. So you can just finish college and get distributed at the place that your parents already arranged for you. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. If you found this long and boring video still interesting, please don't forget to like it and maybe share on your social media. And once again, I have a whole playlist about Soviet education. You're welcome to check it out. I'll post the link below this video in the comment section. And that's where you can learn more about education in the USSR. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Потому что если дороги будут, то по ним неприятель проедет и прямо в сердце России попадет. Я с ними согласен абсолютно.